got an appointment with Mr. Allman. My name's Jack Torrance. His office is the first door on the left. Thank you. Uh, did they uh, give you any idea in Denver about uh, what the job entails? Only in a very general way. Well, the winners can be fantastically cruel. And the basic idea is to, to cope with the very costly damage and depreciation which can occur. And this consists mainly of running the boiler, heating different parts of the hotel on a daily rotating basis, repairing damage as it occurs, and doing repairs so that the elements can't get a foothold. The only thing that can get a bit trying up here during the winter is a uh, tremendous sense of isolation. Well, that <clears throat> just happens to be exactly what I'm looking for. I'm, uh, I'm outlining a new writing project, and uh, five months of peace is just what I want. Because uh, for some people, uh, solitude and isolation can of itself become a problem. Not for me. How about your wife and son? How do you think they'll take to it? They'll love it. Mom? Yeah? You really want to go and live in that hotel for the winter? Sure I do. It'll be lots of fun. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway. There's hardly anybody to play with around here. Yeah, I know. What about Tony? He's looking forward to the hotel, I bet. No, he ain't meant to dance. Now, come on, Tony. Don't be silly. I don't want to call them as a dance. Well, how come you don't want to go? I just don't. I don't believe they did. Well, uh, my predecessor in this job hired a man named Charles Grady as the winter caretaker. And he came up here with his wife and two little girls, I think about eight and ten. And he had a good employment record, good references. And from what I've been told, I mean, he seemed like a completely normal individual. But at some point during the winter, he must have suffered some kind of a complete mental breakdown. He ran amok and... Uh, Killed his family with an axe. Stacked them neatly in one of the rooms of the West Wing, and uh, then he, uh, he put uh, both barrels of a shotgun in his mouth. Police, uh, they thought that it was what the old timers used to call cabin fever, a kind of claustrophobic reaction which can occur when people are shut in together over long periods of time. Well, you can rest assured, Mr. Ullman, that's not going to happen with me. This is the kitchen, huh? Yeah, this is it. How do you like it, Danny? Is it big enough for you? Yeah. It's the best place I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, this whole place is such an enormous maze. I feel like I'll have to leave a trail of breadcrumbs every time I come in. <laughs> and 20 legs of lamb. You like lamb, Doc? No. You don't? Well, what's your favorite food, then? French fries and ketchup. <laughs> well, I think we can manage that, too, Doc. Come along now, watch your step. Mr. Halloran. How'd you know we called him Doc? Big pardon? Doc, you called Danny Doc twice just now. I did? Yeah. We call him Doc sometimes, you know, like in the Bugs Bunny cartoons. But how did you know that? Well, I guess I probably heard you call him that. Well, it's possible, but I honestly don't remember calling him that since we've been with you. Well, anyway, he looks like a Doc, doesn't he? Nah. What's up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> 
You gotta keep regular if you want to be happy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you getting on? Just fine. Hi. Dick, can we borrow Mrs. Torrance for a few minutes? We're on our way through to the basement. I promise we won't keep her very long. No problem, Mr. Hubbard. I'm just getting to the ice cream. You like ice cream, Doc? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you did. You folks don't mind if I give Danny some ice cream. I'll be waiting for you. Not at all. No, we don't mind. Good. Sound good to you, Doc? Yeah. Okay, you behave yourself. Ice cream do you like, Doc? Chocolate. Chocolate it shall be. Come on, son. <laughs> 